everyone. Welcome to Remote STEM Class. It's Mr. Dowd here. So today we're going to finish up doing our Google drawings for our um, avatar project, okay? So today is Wednesday. It's due at the end of the day today. So I'll give you guys till midnight tonight, okay? Maybe Thursday if not a lot of people turn in. I don't know. But anyways, let's see if we can finish this up today. So I'm going to start off, go over to View. I'm going to go to Zoom. Go to 200% so I can see my drawing up close, right? Alrighty. So, i got to add some legs to them. So if I go to my physical traits, oh no, it didn't it didn't save. That stinks. But I know I had put a uh, brown pants on them. Alright, so I'm going to go to the polyline tool. I'm go ahead, give him some legs. And finish it off. So remember, if I close it, it becomes a solid object. So that way I can go ahead and fill it in. I put, I think, brown pants. So let's put those on. And I'm going to give him some boots, I think. So... Give him some black boots, I think, is the plan I'm going to do. It's one boot. Two, two, two. Alrighty. Now those are good. So let's, if I hold down control and click on both of them, make so they're one object, so I can color them both at once. Like a little tip there. All right, so now I got the basic drawing of them. Now I need to make them 3D. All right, so how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do a polyline on the outside of everything here. All right, and when I connect with the lines, it'll make it look 3D. All right, so let's do polyline again. Yeah, I'll start from like right there. Right there. And now I gotta go ahead and go through all of this again. Cause I won't close it and make it look like an object. Alright. So now if I make that darker shade of green. Hmm. Yeah, that didn't look too good. If I do that. Well, I think since I want to finish this up, I'm going to just go ahead and say as long as you got the head going. Because I want to go on to Tinkercad with this. Because that's the main object, okay? So, I just got to add hands then. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the curve tool because fingers are curved, right? Let's go put that there. There, bring that down. That didn't look good. You got one finger. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and keep doing that to get more fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and shorten that. And I don't like that either. Let's go ahead and continue with the polyline tool. and see if there's anything else we can do here. Maybe we'll use shapes instead. Those are arrows. Uh, I don't like any of those. It's not going to work. So I guess polyline will be the best thing we can do. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off screen because we're about to run out of time here. But anyways, we're going to start on Tinkercad on Thursday. So remember, if you can't get into Tinkercad, let me know. I'll get you logged in. All right, guys. Have a great day. Happy Wednesday.
today I'm going to roast some potatoes as a side for dinner. Um, so I've already washed my potatoes. So I'm going to cut them up small. I'm not going to peel them. I'm going to cut them into quarters. Even smaller than that, actually. Okay. And I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoning on them. So the oven is set at 425, it has to be on a high temperature and it takes about half an hour. This is an easy way to have some type of side with your meal or to do potatoes without peeling them. And um, have some flavor. So you can also just bake them in the oven with the skin on, and some people use the microwave too, if they want like a baked potato. All right, so you can put them in the bowl like this. Now these are a lot for us, but um, you can actually reheat them and eat them as a snack. So that's why I have four, these are four big potatoes, but uh, you can use any kind. And um, so that's why I made, I cut them all up so we would use them all, cook them, and then whoever wants them as a snack. Okay. So for the ingredient, for the seasoning, I'm just gonna use salt and pepper, some garlic powder, and some um, olive oil. Then I'm going to mix it all up and I'm going to put it in the oven for about half an hour at 425, which is a high heat. And then I will check on them on a flat cookie sheet. So now they're all in here. It's kind of a small bowl for them, but I think I'll get a bigger bowl. live television right all right so i put it in this bowl only because it's bigger and i'm going to put a little bit of olive oil not too much maybe a tablespoon or two some salt and pepper and a little garlic powder and then i'm going to mix it up I'm putting gloves on so I don't like feel of oil on my hands. Or garlic for that matter. And then mix it up. Make sure all the potatoes get the seasoning. You can smell it, so it smells like oven for half an hour. Make sure you spread them out like this. And also if you do it this way, if there's any extra oil you want to, you don't want that. So just a little bit of So now they're all spread out. Okay, let's do this. And they're ready to go in the oven. Okay. So like this. And I'm gonna cook them for about half an hour. So I will see you on the flip side when they come out. Okay, it's been half an hour. These are big pieces aren't quite done yet. I still need more time, I think. So how can you tell if you stick your fork in it and it goes straight through, then they're done? See, this one doesn't because it's a bigger piece. So I am gonna put it in for about 10 minutes more and then we should be good. And if they're bigger pieces still need it, 
I can just maybe take those out. Let them cook longer. All right, but they're browning nicely, see? All right, so nice and brown. Oh, I just dropped that one. <laughs> All right, so we're good to go. So I'm gonna cook them for like 10 or 15 minutes longer and then uh, they should be done. Hey Gators, welcome back to Language and Play. So, over the last couple weeks, we've been talking about character. And we've been creating some pretty outlandish characters. We had the Starry Night character, we had our Halloween character. Now, what we're going to talk about this week is a little bit of realism and sincerity within theater, within our acting realm. So, to do that, we're going to take a few opportunities to use Flipgrid and we are going to be starting to create some videos where we're talking about community, okay? Um, what I want is for you to feel how you feel. And I know that sounds like a strange way to say it, but every one of you is going to feel something different about your community. And the more true feelings that you're able to put in, the more genuine your character is going to sound. So what I'm going to start to do is we're on Flipgrid going to talk about our Gator community, okay? Pretty much everyone except for the fifth grade has experience being a Gator in person. To all of our fifth grade friends, you've experienced being a Gator through the box that's in front of you, a computer, which is okay because being part of this Gator community and being a Gator is more than just being in front of you. It's the different relationships that you have with one another. It's the relationships you have with your teachers. It's the relationship you have with your community at large, the people in your neighborhood, because that's all part of the Arlington Gator community. Okay? So what we're going to do is we are on Flipgrid going to say, what is your favorite part what's the best thing about being a gator for our eighth graders you have four years of experience for being a gator might be hard to come up with your favorite part for our fifth graders you have a couple months of being a gator remotely it might be hard coming up with your favorite part but that's okay just think of one moment and i want you to put as much feeling and as much emotion from your heart as you can. Sometimes acting isn't always just faking it. Sometimes acting is really feeling it to make your audience feel what you're feeling. Okay? So this is what our prompt's going to be. All right? What is the best thing about being a Gator? And I want you to think about a couple of different points. Think about that community at large. Think about kindness. Remember, our motto is be kind, and work hard, right? Two very simple things that make a big difference in your day and make a big difference in your life, okay? What about the way we work together? The way you work with one another, the way you work with your teachers, the way right now you're working with your parents, that's all part of being a Gator, all right? And also that idea of relationship with adults, okay? how the adults in your life are guiding you and helping you, especially through these very troubling times where you need a little bit more guidance and probably you're relying on those adult relationships to help you more than you would be if it was a normal school year. All right, so again, we want feeling. We want genuine feeling in our flip grids, okay? What is your best thing about being a Gator? What's your favorite thing about being a Gator? All right, I can't wait to see him, guys. Good luck. Hi, guys. Today we're going to finish up this drawing of the little kitten with the baby chick. So I looked back at my photo, and I realized I had made my eyes a little too high and a little too far apart. So I'm just going to redraw them and bring them down and bring them a little closer together. Hey, I'm going to go in and make that little pupil. 
the little black pupil in there in the eye in the center. Maybe I'll lower the nose down a little just because I had adjusted where the eyes are. Okay. I'm going to make a little bit of fuzz over here. I'm going to add a little color now. So when I look at the kitty, he's pretty much white with some gray. So I'm going to use black and white. And maybe I'll also use a little bit of green for his eyes. So I'm going to start out with black. And I'm going to look at his little stripes that I see here. And I'm also going to be kind of looking where it looks like there's some shadow or some gray fur throughout him. So I'm going to look at his face first. I'm just going to add a little bit of some gray fur around there. A little bit around between his eyes and he's a striped kitty so I'm definitely going to add some striped details and you can follow along with me and add some details to your cat to finish up this drawing so he's got some interesting patterns on his fur little stripe going up like this the center stripe that goes all the way up to the top Got a little another little stripe over here and then kind of breaks and then there's like another little piece up there in the top so i'm just looking at my photograph my reference photo to see where he has his little stripes and adding those details i'm in the ear area too and i notice in my photo that his ear is sort of darker on the inside so now that i have my black pencil i'm just going to shade that in a little bit add a little bit of a darker value of that um, kind of a gray a darker gray and I'm also going to open up the ear a little bit when I am always looking back and forth I'm looking up at my photo and back at my drawing up at the photo and back just to make sure I'm getting everything right so I'm widening out widening that inside of the ear and darkening it in shading it in adding a darker value to my cat. Going back down to the eyes, I'm just going to darken the line around his eye, but I'm going to make the eyes have a greenish hue color. This. His nose is black, so I'm going to darken that in. Just going to darken, um, adding a new little line under his nose, lowering the mouth a tiny bit. This. And I see, let's see, a little dark here, a little bit of dark here, like that. And you can just go in and add some little stripes where you think they should go. You can look at my photo or you can just use your imagination where you want the stripes to go on your kitty. And way down here, I'm going to look a little bit lower on his body, and I see some darker areas on his fur, so I'm just going to go ahead and add those in. Create a little shadow in between his little front paws. Over here, it looks like a little puff. Maybe that's his little tail. That little area there, I think, is his little tail. And that's darker. I'm just going to darken that in. And go back here a little bit. Maybe just darken a little bit under his chin. Making that fuzzy kind of furry line to create the look of texture. Hmm. Now I'm going to work on those eyes a little bit. Just add a little bit of green to those eyes. And I'm going to make it a little darker at the top and make it be a little bit lighter as I come down lower. So I'm just pressing a little bit darker to get that darker value of green, just a darker shade of green, and keep it light at the bottom of his eye. It's just gonna give that look of um, creating form, a little bit of form on the eye, so it looks like a rounded eye. And I might even just grab my yellow, just 
Just add a touch of yellow to those eyes. Okay, grab my black again and I'm working on these little stripes on his body. So I'm just going to add some more black line here. A little bit of a stripe right here. Kind of a wider patch of gray here. And then all back here is darker. I see some dark areas in the back of his body. I'm just going to kind of shade that in a little bit. I think I'm going to be finished with the cat for now. You guys can continue to add little stripes and shadow where you want them to go. I'm going to go back up to this little chicky over here. Uh, I'm going to be starting off with some yellow. Like that. Maybe make it a little darker down here. And I can go in with maybe some brown or even a little bit of purple and create some shadows, some darker values. I see a lot of light on his wing, on the top of the wing here, so I'm gonna leave that lighter, a lighter value of yellow, and then kind of darken it underneath. So it's a darker value, darker shade of yellow. So you guys can keep on going. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange to his beak and a little bit of orange to his legs. And then that's gonna be it. And you guys can continue on adding more color and stripes and details. And you can also add a nice bright background behind that cat and chick. Okay, bye. Hey guys, welcome back to Virtual PE. I'm Miss Sridi. All right, after our Voters Day day off, it's time to stretch again. So we're gonna work our lower body with me. All right, so we're gonna grab our left leg and we're gonna hold it for 15 seconds. And switch. Nice. Okay, we're going to use this wall. I'm going to lean against it. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to stretch our gluteus maximus. If you need a deeper stretch, you can pull. And switch. Actually, for a deeper stretch, I just sat that lower. the wall we're going to do a calf stretch you put your balls of your feet right against the wall and you're going to push forward with your hips and switch Lunge. We're going to keep this foot flat and we're going to lunge to the other side. We're going to stretch our groin area.
Nice. We're going to keep our feet again <clears throat> a little bit wider than shoulder width, and we're going to go down to one side. Keep our legs locked. That's the, the goal here. Knees locked. And when it stay down, we're going to go right to the middle. Walk it over to the other leg. Nice. All right, we're gonna use the wall and we're gonna stretch our lower back. You can also do this by sitting down, um, but since I'm standing up today, I'm gonna reach back with my right arm use the wall and try to keep my legs my hips as straight as possible away from the arms nice gonna go the other way again reach back I'm using my left arm Put one foot in front of the other. We're going to put our weight back and we're going to shift our hips forward and stretch backwards too at the same time. And switch. Again, put your weight on your back foot. Right, guys i hope you had a great lower body workout with me um i'm assuming we'll work your upper body see you guys later um so it's wednesday and typically it is a workout day but because you had tuesday off we're going to make today a stretch day okay so again no one feel doing a stretch we get right into it we're going to do some upper body stretches with me today all right so let's start off with some shoulder circles Going forward for 10 and backwards for 10. Good, let's put your right arm across your body, get a little pressure on there. Let's hold it for 15 seconds. Release, and let's put your left arm across your body. Stretch that shoulder, that deltoid out. Get those shoulders stretched out. Good, let's go to triceps, right hand behind your head. Yeah, release, let's go with the left, left hand behind your head. Get that tricep nice stretched up. Okay, put your hands above your head now. Let's just lean. Okay, reach as high as you can. Okay, 
Tuhan. Ini yang gue lihat saya. Let's get the biceps tendon in the front of the shoulder. Right hand on your shoulder. Just get a little bit of pressure on your elbow. Good. Now let's switch. Lift it up. Pressure on your elbow. Get that biceps tendon stretched. Good, and last one, I'm gonna adjust my camera. We're gonna get our last stretch out here, right? Do our last, walk to your side view, put your right arm out, your left foot back, just lean into it. Switch, come out, right foot back, just lean right into it. Job, guys. I'll be back at you tomorrow with another workout. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.